The Wild West is where the most cunning and brutal outlaws roam the land. Among these infamous characters is Ike Clanton, a very calculating man and an opportunist who, despite everything to achieve his goals. In this video, we'll dive into the life of Ike Clanton and discover why he's considered by many to be the Wild West's most cowardly outlaw. From his early years as a rancher to his infamous role in gunfight at the OK Corral. We will examine the events and controversies surrounding his life. Get ready to discover the true story of Ike Clanton, the most notorious coward of the Wild West. Joseph Isaac Clanton, also known as Ike Clanton, was born in 1847 in Callaway County, Missouri, to Newman Haynes Clanton and his wife Mariah Sexton Clanton. Newman was a laborer, gold miner, and later cattle rancher in the Arizona Territory. Ike was one of seven children born to this couple, but unfortunately, his mother passed away in 1866. The Clanton family moved to Tombstone, Arizona Territory around 1877. Newman was living with his sons Finn, Ike, and Billy at the time. In 1878, Ike, with the support of his family, opened a small lunch stand at the Tombstone Mill site. However, he eventually left the food business behind and started working on his father's farm in Lewis Springs, about 19 kilometers west of Tombstone and 8.0 kilometers from Charleston. Remember to hit the like button, because it helps us a lot. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell to not miss the upcoming interesting video. The Clanton family and their associates were known as the Cowboys and were known for their recklessness. They were charged with herding cattle across the US-Mexico border, along with other acts of robbery and murder. This behavior has led to many clashes with citizens and legal defenders. Ike Clanton is primarily known for his many conflicts with Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday. The Earps and the Clantons had significant ideological, personal, and legal differences, which led to animosity between them throughout 1881. As an example, the Cowboys supported incumbent Sheriff Charles Shibble, while the Earps supported his opponent, Bob Paul, in the November 1880 election. In addition, Clanton was known to have a tendency to brag in public, drink a lot, and be short-tempered. He was noticed by everyone for talking too much. One incident that caused an already bitter animosity between the Earps and the Clantons was the theft of one of Wyatt Earps' horses shortly after his arrival in Tombstone in November 1879. According to Wyatt's later testimony, 18-year-old Billy Clanton insolently asked him if he had any more horses to lose. However, Earp did not give the horse a title before taking it, which proves to Wyatt that Billy knows to whom the horse belongs. Police Chief Johnny Bean later testified that this incident made Ike Clanton extremely angry and tensions between the two factions escalated. In the sultry summer of 1881, Ike Clanton had a heated argument with a famous gambler named Denny McCann. As they sat in a pub on Allen Street, Clanton insulted McCann, and in response, McCann slapped him in the face. Enraged, Clanton stormed out of the pub and retrieved his pistol. McCann did the same, and they met on the street in front of Wells Fargo's office, ready to draw their weapons. Before they could open fire, however, Tombstone Marshal Virgil Earp intervened and stopped the fight in time. But that wasn't the end of Clanton's troubles. In the early morning of June 6, 1881, Old Man Clanton and six other men were on a herding mission, herding stolen cattle through the Guadalupe Canyon near the Mexican border. The cattle were sold to him by William Brocious, a notorious outlaw known as Curly Bill. Near dawn, they were ambushed by Mexicans sent by Commander Felipe Neri. This was known as the Guadalupe Canyon Massacre, and it claimed the lives of Old Man Clanton and five other men. When Ike Clanton survived the Guadalupe Canyon Massacre, speculating he had left his fighting brothers behind, his reputation as a cowardly outlaw began to haunt him. Clanton is known for his swagger and love of whiskey. He claimed that Doc Holliday, Virgil Earp, Wyatt Earp, and Morgan Earp had all confessed to him that they were involved in the Benson stage robbery. 
On October 25, 1881, while Clanton was at Tombstone, drunk and very noisy, Holliday accused him of lying about the robbery. Virgil Earp intervened to defuse the situation. But Clanton hadn't stopped causing trouble. After that day, he got drunk again, brought more guns and went around causing trouble. The Earp brothers surprised him on the street, disarmed him, and put him before Judge Wallace for violating the city's gun laws. Clanton denied threatening Earps and refused to hand over his rifle, but was ultimately fined $25 in court fees. Virgil Earp promised to deal with the weapons confiscated at the Grand Hotel. However, Clanton later testified that a few days later he had obtained the weapon from the warden. The Earps have always watched over the cowboys and considered them a threat to their law and order in Tombstone. Clanton's outbursts and defiance only added fuel to the fire. In the late afternoon of October 26, 1881, tensions between the Earps and the cowboys finally flared up into the infamous gunfight at the OK Coral. Prior to the gunfight, Tensions had grown between the two groups, with Virgil Earp discovering that Wyatt was talking to the cowboys at Spangenberg's gun shop. Virgil armed himself with a double-barreled handgun from Wells Fargo's office, but to avoid causing alarm, he hid it under his long coat when he returned to Hafford Saloon. When he got there, he gave a shotgun to Doc Holliday. Along the way, several citizens informed Virgil that the McClowries and Clantons had gathered on Fremont Street and were armed. Despite offers of assistance from the Citizen Vigilance Committee, Virgil declined. He had previously represented Morgan and Wyatt and also represented Doc Holliday that morning. Wyatt referred to his brothers Virgil and Morgan as Marshal while he acted as Deputy General. During the gunfight, witnesses testified that Ike Clanton spent the day threatening to shoot Earps, even after being arrested and disarmed. Once the shooting began, however, Clanton quickly ran over and grabbed Wyatt, assuming he was unarmed and unwilling to fight. Wyatt responded with the now famous quote, fight or flight. The cowardly Clanton then ran into Fly's Inn and escaped unharmed. In the days leading up to the gunfight, Clanton enlisted the help of cowboy Billy Claiborne, who was known to be good with guns. However, Claiborne, cowardly, abandoned the brothers from the scene. In the end, Tom, Frank McClowry and Billy Clanton are killed. While there are various interpretations of what happened that day, one thing is clear, the gunfight at the OK. The Corral will forever be an iconic event in American history. After the infamous Tombstone gunfight, Ike Clanton charged Earps and Doc Holliday with murder, which led to their arrest and later release on bail. At a preliminary hearing held by Judge Wells Spicer, Clanton testified that he had been mistreated by Earps and Holliday the night before the fight. However, he denies threatening Earps, insisting instead that he and the Clantons, along with Frank McClowry, obey Virgil's orders to raise their hands, with Tom demonstrating his unarmed status by open vest. Clanton testified that Wyatt pointed a pistol to his stomach, roaring, Bastard, you can fight. Sometime later, the Clantons purchased land near a farm owned by their sister Mary. Finn arrived in June and Ike in August 1882. By 1885, each had a 160-acre farm 10 miles east of Springerville, near the New Mexico border. In April 1887, Ike Clanton was arrested and jailed for theft. In the following months of May and June, several grand jury indictments were brought against the Clanton gang and their associates. These indictments include cattle theft and murder in the death of Isaac Ellinger. Brighton, a lawyer, is tasked with pursuing Clanton. After a three-day chase, Brighton caught up with Clanton and spent the night on May 31, 1887, at Jim Peg Leg Wilson's ranch on Eagle Creek, south of Springerville. During the confrontation, Brighton shot Clanton to the left, and the bullet escaped from the right, killing him instantly. This incident marked the end of the Clanton's reign of terror in Arizona. Historical records indicate that the killing of Ike Clanton was considered justifiable homicide by law enforcement and widely celebrated by the local community. According to one source, Ike Clanton's body was left in place for several days before being buried in an unmarked grave by Mormon ranchers in Eager, Arizona. 
The farm is now known as the 26 Bar Farm. In 1996, Terry Ike Clanton, a descendant of the Clanton family, and James A. Browning, a former Citadel professor and grave expert, searched for Ike Clanton's remains near Eagle Creek in Greenlee County, Arizona. After some searching, they discovered a shallow grave under a large tree that they believed might contain Ike's remains. Terry tried to convince Tombstone City officials to exhume the remains and reburial them at Tombstone's famous Boot Hill Cemetery, but was unsuccessful. Despite his reputation as a troublemaker and gunfighter, he has always shown a lack of courage in the face of the consequences of his actions. From fleeing the Tombstone gunfight to his eventual death at the hands of law enforcement, Clanton has shown a reluctance to face the consequences of his deeds. While the legends of the Wild West continue to fascinate us, it's important to remember that not everyone who lived during that time was a hero. Clanton serves as a reminder that sometimes, the true measure of a person's character lies not in how they face their enemies, but in how they face their own fears. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below, so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.